Hey, you're looking good today. This is Frank in the Brazil Times newsroom, and here's what's happening. The Clay City Town Council met last night, and uh, they accepted the bid on a new water project, but uh, they will have to borrow more than they first thought to finance the project. That's that water project that's uh, been needed and has been uh, acted upon for some time now, and uh, they're getting to the place where they are finding financing and uh, getting that project started. They've accepted a bid for that. Harvey Roscoe's here. Good morning, Harvey. Hello, Jane Williams. Glad to see you folks today. Also at Clay City last night, the police department has received a grant that will put a laptop, computer, and printer in each of the town's two police vehicles. The uh, police chief said this would save time as they are inputting accident information. And uh, when uh, tickets are issued, the paperwork will be transferred directly to the courts for citations. He wanted us to urge that uh, they will not be writing more tickets, but uh, it will make their jobs easier and their time uh, better used. Also, the town is going to have to pay an estimated $27,000 to the state for uh, back utility taxes. Lori Brown's here. Glad to see you, Lori. And the situation is that uh, there are some organizations that are exempt from these utility taxes, but uh, Clay City is not exempt because they have a city-owned uh, water utility and therefore uh, they have to pay taxes each year on the uh, um, gross amount of uh, water taxes or water usage that is billed. So we have that going on from the uh, Clay City Town Council meeting last night. Now let's see what's in today's edition of the Brazil Times. The Senior Citizen Center of Clay County is no longer a nutrition site for the Area 7 Agency on Aging and Disabled of West Central Economic Development Incorporated. And that's okay, said Sharon Brown, Executive Director of the Center. On January 1, Area 7 contracted with Midland Meals of Lafayette to provide meal deliveries in this, in this area. Area 7 had been paying the local Senior Citizen Center $100 per month for the use of their building. An oven, two refrigerators, and two fire freezers were kept in the building by Area 7. When Midland's contract with Area 7 began, the payment stopped. Area 7 had paid $100 per month to each site, but Midland Meals has never paid and has always worked with organizations that would let them use their building, said Elaine Brovant, Midland Meals Executive Director. And as the story goes on to say, uh, due to energy savings from uh, not running the electricity for those freezers and refrigerators in that oven and the fact that the Senior Citizen Center put in LED lights, the uh, energy savings offset that $100 that Area 7 had been paying. Good morning to you, Mike Peterson. I know you had a beautiful day yesterday in Florida, and uh, it's going to be nice here today. Uh, they're not sure how much snow we're going to get, though, so uh, you might keep that in mind if you're coming back Saturday or if you're going to be out driving around anybody on Saturday. It looks like most of the snow is going to the southern third of the state. So depending on how you look at it, that could or could not include us. So we might have just some uh, rain-snow mix, which wouldn't be too bad. Okay, also in today's edition of the Brazil Times, Robert Adams was named to replace Jim Lumsden on the Posey Fire District Board. Adams will fulfill Lumsden's term effective immediately through 2018. That appointment was made by the Clay County Commissioners on Monday. The commissioners also approved a three-year contract with McAllister Power Systems for a total of $8,847. The company maintains power systems for the Clay County Justice Center. The commissioners named an internal controls committee, and that committee is required of local government entities throughout the state by state law. They also accepted the annual Clay County Cash and Investments Combined Report that is required by the state. Of course, that's a financial report. Purdue Extension will host the Farmers Share Ribeye Dinner on Thursday, March 23rd at the uh, 
Clay County 4-H Fairgrounds. Doors open at 6.15 p.m. and dinner will start at 6.30. The event is held in conjunction with Ag Day Week at the Fairgrounds. Dr. Chris Hurt of Purdue is going to be the main speaker. The community yard sale was a huge success, according to the organizers of the event that raised money to support the Clay County Youth Food Program. Early bird shoppers were knocking on the door with, at the 4-H fairgrounds before the sale started at 8 a.m. Carrie Cunningham said Saturday they were here shortly after 7, and uh, you can read more about that. Also on the front page today, organizers for the community yard sale to support the Clay County Youth Food Program were Susan Mesh and Carrie Cunningham, and we have a picture of them, and along with uh, Leslie McDonald, not pictured, the three helped sell raffle tickets at the event for a chance to win a quilt made and donated by the members of the Purposeful Living Unit Serve or PLUS program at the Maximum Security State Prison, Wabash Correctional Facility in Carlisle. The quilt was awarded Monday to lucky raffle ticket holder Lisa Byers in the center in the photo that we have for you. Nicole Fry and uh, Mesh joined Byers at the YMCA to present the quilt. All three women volunteer for the program. So congratulations, Lisa Byers. After serving the residents of Clay County for 42 years, George O. Brown III, physician assistant of the Clay City Center for Family Medicine, will retire Friday. To the patients he served, Brown states, I uh, appreciate the opportunity you have given me to be your health care provider and have had an awesome career. I appreciate all the kindness and good wishes expressed to me and my family. And congratulations on his retirement to uh, George O. Brown, the third physician assistant. Wow, 42 years. And they're going to miss him there at Clay City, I'm sure. Hey, Mike Peterson writes, I visited the Gulf Shores Rotary Club yesterday, their spring break festival on Madeira Beach is next week. It's kind of like our 4th of July, he says. Well, if it is, I'm sure they have a, a great time. And... Uh, uh, our Rotary Club here in Brazil is gearing up for the 4th of July celebration, and uh, we're already started having meetings about that. Mike, we're going to miss you today. We're having a club assembly, and uh, all of our committees are going to meet and uh, make plans. Spring is on the way. It is springing, and that's a good thing. Let's see here. We've got Brazil Buzz today. Mary Lou Sarter is writing about the flu bug still biting that writer. So Mary Lou, I hope you get feeling better. And the Houseville United Presbyterian Church is the subject of uh, Clay County Through the Years. That's a feature that we run each Wednesday in the Brazil Times. Let's see here what else we have going on. In sports, uh, Kerry Fox reports, Northview Senior Lizzie Lindsay Lunsford, excuse me, has been a part of some outstanding high school squads during her four-year night's career. Next season, she will blaze a trail to join the Lincoln Trail College Volleyball Program. While at Northview, Lunsford and the Knights won four consecutive regional championships and also played in the Class 3A state championship game in 2014. So Lindsay Lunsford is going to the Statesman. Congratulations to Lindsay and to her parents. Okay, we have other uh, information here for you. How about some junior high wrestling information? The North Clay wrestling team claimed third place Saturday at the Western Indiana Conference Tournament at Edgewood. Daniel Gugino, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, Daniel, claimed a championship at 132 pounds, and the Knights got runner-up finishes from Preston Knuckles, Caleb Rowe, Mason Metz, Isaac Torbert, and Trey Cowden. Landon Moore placed third for the Knights. Way to go, guys. Okay. And, oh, here's something you're going to want to know about. The TV grids are returning. They have returned. We do have our TV schedules back in the Brazil Times. Uh, our editor tells me that they're going to be on the entertainment page every day from now on. So... Uh, you can look for that 
whenever you get your Brazil Times uh, paper paper, you can look for the uh, television grids. And we appreciate all those who spoke up and said, hey, I miss my grids. Got to know what's going on on the TV. Well, what better place to go when you want to know something than the Brazil Times, right? Right. Oh, got to check out the family circus. What's going on? Jeffy. I think, yeah, that's Jeffy. Jeffy seems to be dominating that, uh, that uh, comic. I think Billy and his sister would be very upset about that. <laughs> He's wearing a sweater that is way too big for him. The sleeves are hanging off his hands. And it says Grandma's Big Boy on the front of the sweater. And, and uh, Jeffy says, I don't think I'm as big a boy as Grandma thinks. Yeah. What can I say? Those, those sweaters that come from aunts and grandmas, many times too big, too little. But uh, their heart's in the right place anyway, right? Right. Okay. Also have a story from the Associated Press about uh, that Midwestern storm that uh, did so much damage. You can read about that. And we have more local news on the back page. Head Start students have enjoyed several activities this school year with help from the auxiliaries and members of the Veterans of Foreign Wars, Post 1127, and the American Legion, Post 2. On Monday, while children and their families gathered for a drive-in movie event at the Clay County Head Start facility, auxiliary members provided snow cones, potato chips, and cotton candy for them to munch on while watching Dr. Seuss' Cat in the Hat cartoons and decorated banana box cars. Have a picture of them and the rest of that story is, uh, is, on, our, is on our website and in today's edition of the Brazil Times as well. So anyway, we've got a lot more for you in uh, the Brazil Times printed edition today. A lot more for you on our website and we update that website 24-7. So come back and look at it regularly. Joanne Sterley's here. Glad to see you, Joanne. Uh, the website address is www.thebraziltimes.com. Hey, remember, this is your only local live newscast where you participate through your feedback. So uh, when uh, you have something you want to say, a comment to be made, uh, or something you want to share, just type it into your uh, browser, onto your phone, and uh, send it in to us while we're live and uh, we'll share it with uh, our viewers. And any other time, you can also reach us, uh, any of us here in the newsroom. My address is uh, Frank Phillips. That's with two L's, frankphillips at gmail.com. And uh, we'll catch you all later. Glad to see you today, and uh, I hope that you have an outstanding Wednesday.